We have rules, you know? We all do, because there are too many games out there and we simply need to have some sort of criteria to help us decide which to play. Or because we are too old for some of the shit that's going on with games nowadays. We may not always talk about our policies as gamers, but all of us have them. But I'll be the first to admit that I've broken some of my own rules from time to time, because fuck the rules, even mine. And I know that you have also broken yours, you dirty fecker. So I thought it'd be fun to tell you about my policies, the times I've broken them, and whether or not it was worth it. I don't think I need to say that these policies don't have to be yours, you don't have to agree with them. These are policies with which I feel comfortable. I am, though, very curious about yours. And I hope to read about them in the comments section down below. Let's get started with mine, shall we? Believe it or not, I do have a couple of honorable mentions. I don't play games on easy or story mode. All video games need easy modes! <laughs> I want a challenge. Life is hard enough. I want a cool interactive story. <laughs> That would depress me to no end. I just want to enjoy the story, it's just not in my DNA. I want to enjoy the challenge as it was meant to. Have I ever broken this policy? Yes, with two games, both of which were Super Nintendo games oddly enough, Contra 3 Alien Wars and Act Racer 2. Contra 3 Alien Wars I eventually went on to finish on the hardest difficulty level. Act Racer 2 I barely managed to finish once on the normal difficulty level. In games with multiple endings, if I'm curious about a different ending, I play the game again. I don't generally watch other people's videos to see what would have happened if I had chosen this or that, or if I had done things this or that way. Have I ever broken this policy? Yes, I did play Fallout New Vegas a couple of times, and both times I got completely different outcomes. I was just too curious about all the roads not taken, because it was so fucking awesome. As you might imagine, I had to watch several videos, and I'm not so sure I'm going to play Sekiro again to see what the Shura ending is about, and I already watched the video. So here's my top 10 personal policies. 10. I don't play games from all genres. I know I'm missing out on a lot, but I just don't. I don't care how good you all say Age of Empires or Civilization are, I just don't play real-time strategy games. Racing games, I suck at them, and I hate them. They are a hard pass for me. Have I ever broken this policy? Well, of course. I bought gangsters back in the day because I've always been interested in anything that has to do with organized crime and mafia. This title by Eidos Interactive was meant to be an organized crime-themed real-time strategy game. Was it worth it? Fuck no, I hated it. I know what you're going to say. You didn't try the worst real-time strategy game there is. You should try... Enough! 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 No. No, just no. As for racing games, I played Mario Kart once or twice at a friend's house. And well, there are two things I detest in gaming. Anything with a Mario name on it and racing games. You can't imagine how that went. Back in the day, I played OutRun, which was okay, but kind of pointless because it didn't have a league or a championship. And not too long after that, I played Grand Prix Circuit, which was okay, but not enough for me to become an enthusiast. And don't even get me started on simulation games, Family games? No, just... no. 9. I never pre-order. So the bait with pre-orders is always, buy now and save yada yada. Or buy before it goes out of stock or whatever. What the promotion never tells you is the many things you'll be getting for free. And that is bugs, glitches, balance issues, unfinished games, and lots of other fun things. And since the older I get, the more resistant I become to hype, I've gotten more and more stout about this one. But... Have I ever broken this policy? Yes, when I was younger and more naive. I pre-ordered World of Warcraft. Hey, it's only $39.99 if I pre-order, I said. So if I throw in 12 additional euros, I was living in Spain at the time, which is what the monthly fee costs, I'm going to pay what I would have paid for any other AAA title. And pss, of course I'm going to finish this game in less than a month. Please. I think you can all imagine how that went, but did it work for me? Well, the thing with games like these is that if you buy it five days later than everyone else, you're going to be walking into a world where everyone's level 60 and doing epic 40-man dungeons while you're going to be a clueless level 2 moron jumping around like an idiot. And everyone's going to own your ass for a while until other noobs join in, but I had it since day one, so I was someone else's bitch only occasionally. On the other hand, servers didn't run too smoothly, most of them were packed full, and there were some serious lag issues from time to time. So I guess it wasn't the best decision ever, 
but it wasn't the worst either. 8. I don't buy special collector editions. Most of the times they are shameless cash grabs. There are some pretty awesome ones, but they generally don't add anything to the game itself. So they are generally a hard pass for me. Have I ever broken this rule? Yes. I bought the Overlord edition for Tyranny. When I heard that the people behind Pillars of Eternity were putting out a new isometric RPG, I immediately scoped it out. And I loved the artwork. The game seemed to take place in a fantasy world that was sort of transitioning from the Bronze Age into the Iron Age. For once, it was something that didn't seem derivative of D&D or The Lord of the Rings. Then I read what the game was about, and its two main selling points were that your decisions as a player were going to be really, truly very important. And that, for once, you were going to play as the bad guys. Shut up and take my money! I read the description on all of the available editions, and when I saw that the Overlord edition shipped with a soundtrack, a book of short stories, and an art book, I went straight for that one. Do I repent this decision? Not at all. I played Tyranny twice, and between the first and the second playthrough, I read the short stories. And I must admit, they opened up a whole new perspective and made me enjoy the game a heck of a lot more. If the game was an 8 out of 10, Reading the short stories turned it into a 9 out of 10. If you haven't read these stories, my friends, do it. Siren's story is especially awesome. 7. I don't go in blind. I do my homework. Whenever a game catches my eye, I wait until it's been out for a couple of days, or weeks, or months. And then I check my usual sources to decide if that game that I have been thumbing for so long is indeed the right game for me or not. This is a fairly new policy. I used to visit GameSpot back in the day, but I admit it was more to have my opinions validated on games that I had already played than to check out games that I hadn't played before. But as I got older and started to watch less and less reviews of games that I had already played, and more and more reviews on games that I hadn't played in the hopes that these reviews would help me to make informed purchases, I started to realize that there were some YouTube channels out there, hosted by gamers, that were also for gamers. And thus, they were a lot more thorough, transparent, and useful. There are just too many games out there and too little time and money, so I try to make the best out of it. Wouldn't you agree? Have I broken this policy lately? Yes. With Black Guy, sir. And well, you'll see how that went in the next video. 6. I don't go with the meta. I've never been a competitive gamer. I might have dabbled in some of that for a brief while with Street Fighter 2, but not much. And I understand that if you're going to be serious about gaming, you need to pay close attention to what everyone's doing and suck in as much information from the community's body of knowledge as you can. But using someone else's ideas to beat a game? That's a very Puff Daddy thing to do. I think that 50% of the fun in a game is figuring out a way that works for you, a way that plays to your strengths and mitigates your weaknesses. Every time I hear, Uh, what are you doing, dude? That's not how it's done. No one's doing it that way. I picture myself ending that idiot's life there and then while I hit him with an 80s one-liner like Hasta la vista, baby. Before I blow him out with a bazooka or something. Have I ever broken this rule? Kinda. During my second playthrough in Divinity Original Sin 2, I checked out Fextra Life's guide and borrowed some ideas. Not all though. And for my third playthrough in Pillars of Eternity 2, I also checked their guide just to make a better informed decision on the best races and archetypes for multi-classing purposes and shit. 5. I don't get games in early access. I think developers should get their own beta testers and pay them to try out the game. And if it's a gamble, because as a developer you're putting out a game that isn't finished because you don't yet have the money to put it all together, it should be your gamble, not mine. I know, I understand if you don't share this policy. For the last four or five years, the best games out there have been indie games. They try new things, they put some effort into replay value, they more or less always put you in the driver's seat as a player, and so on and so forth. And their developers don't always have the money to put 100% of the game together from the get-go. And that includes testing. Yeah, I know, it's a way to support an indie developer whose work you trust to make a game that you would otherwise not be able to enjoy. I get it. I have nothing to say against that. But... I just have a low tolerance to risk, that's all. 4. I don't buy games more than once. This includes different versions for different consoles, remasters, or enhanced editions. Have I broken this rule? Well, duh, yes. I got Beamdog's enhanced edition for Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, and Icewind Dale. Do I repent this decision? Kinda, mate. I kinda do. I think there's a lot in these editions that's actually worse than I remember it. But if it hadn't been for these editions, I wouldn't have played the Heart of Winter expansion for Icewind Dale, which I totally skipped back in the day. And well, I admit that I recently acquired the Definitive Edition for Outward. 
because that's one of my favorite games of the last decade, and I'm pretty sure I'll be milking a couple more hundred hours or so out of it. 3. I don't do MMOs. Anymore, at least. Some of the fondest memories I have as a gamer, I have thanks to World of Warcraft. Much of the time I spent with this infamous title was time well spent, but I can't help but think that I probably would be in a different, perhaps even better place on a personal level if it hadn't been for the ridiculous amount of time I sank into this game. I also played Guild Wars, but that was shit, and also Battlefield 1942, but not for long. But those days are behind me. I've been clean for 12 years, 8 months, and 13 days. Besides, I'm too old to hear about how you slept with my mother, or how about you know where I live and how you're going to beat the shit out of me or anything like that. I'm also too old to see your character just standing there idly because you're AFK because your mother is patrolling outside your room and you have to make her believe that you're sleeping or some shit like that. I'll never be too old to watch and laugh at videos like this though. Okay, my mom just cancelled my brother's uh, World of Warcraft account and he is freaking <gasps> out. Shit, what? <laughs> Oh my god. Baby boy! Damn it, bro! I Remote control fetish is strong in this one. Two, I don't play mobile games. I hate little screens, I hate touching on a screen to make things happen, and yeah, I know things like this exist, but there's not a chance in hell I'm buying one of those. And my phone is shitty. I'm a huge Diablo fan, and a few years ago this happened at BlizzCon. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any, uh, yeah, this, this, the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do, do you guys not have phones? Yeah. So you can imagine what my reaction was. One second later. <laughs> have I ever broken this policy? Yeah, I have this dumb little game called Ninja Revenge for when I'm waiting to pay the ticket at the parking lot, and I had Marvel Champions on my phone once, which is not a bad game, but I didn't go too far in it because, one, I absolutely never engage in pay to win, loot boxes, surprise mechanics, or whatever shitty ass name these corporate assholes want to give it these days. This is one of the biggest threats to gaming as we know it, and in my opinion, we have to do everything within our power to end it. Let's see uh, the whale. As you can see here, this whale, 6,735 damage and 75,209 life. So he's got 20,000 more life and about double the damage? So this is something that no amount of grinding is really going to catch you up on. <laughs> this guy isn't even maxed. 
and he has this much more. It's not even his final damage. form. So this I think it's a lame, disgusting, predatory practice that we all should fight against with every fiber of our gaming beings. It has completely destroyed sports games, and it's coming for other genres too. Have I ever broken this policy? Fuck no. And that's it. Let me know about your personal gaming policies in the comments section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thank you for watching all the way up until now. If you like what you're seeing in this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to avoid the usual YouTube shenanigans. Share the video, but most importantly, never stop gaming, but don't let gaming get in the way of your hopes and dreams. Bye everyone.